Welcome to today's edition of 10 TV Plus. My name is meteorologist Dylan Robichaud. Well, it has appeared winter has arrived early across the lower 48. Take a look at the current snow on the ground here across the lower 48. And this stretches all the way down towards uh, Northern California out here in the west. And then as we head off towards uh, the northern plains, you can see plenty of snow up there. And then as we uh, head off towards the New England states as well, even they have uh, some snowfall that they've received out there today. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit further here. And you can see across upstate Maine, they have been hammered with snow over the past week or so. Even parts of uh, the Berkshires and western Massachusetts. The Appalachian Mountains from Maine through New Hampshire uh, down through the Adirondacks of New York all getting some snowfall out there now and even across parts of the Great Lakes. We both know that we've been uh, getting a lot of lake effect snow recently. Lake Erie. Oh man, look at this. We've seen multiple feet of snow here over the last week or so and there's more to come out there today. So how does this compare to what we saw last year at this time? Well, let's take a look here at snowfall in December of 2023. This is exactly a year ago today. Across the northern Rockies, we had some snowfall out there. Parts of Wisconsin had a little bit of snowfall. Maine, northern New Hampshire, northern Vermont. That's pretty much it. So, so far this winter, we have seen more snow than we did last year at this time. And so if you are a snow lover, that is good for you. Of course, we haven't seen a whole lot here across parts of central Ohio, but where we don't get natural snow, we can make it. This is a live look from Logan County, Mad River Mountain. Oh man, these snow guns are out there again today. And finally, we're getting some good accumulation now completely covering the ground where they have been looking at quite a bit of snowfall out there over the last couple of uh, days. Man-made snow, that is. Snow guns will continue tonight as we're going to be looking at another frigid night. You can see right now as the camera moves here, uh, obviously, ski lifts are beginning to move a little bit here. It's kind of cool watching the groovers kind of go up and down the hill and uh, pack down that snow because you got to make sure you have several feet of snow here out there in order to open up the slopes. How long until winter? 16 days and counting. We have until December the 21st until the official winter solstice. Now, on the first day of winter, what happens is that the southern hemisphere parts of uh, the Tropic of Capricorn, which is 23 and a half degrees south, they're getting all that sunlight. And so what happens is that because the Earth is tilted, half the year they get more sunlight. The other half of the year we get more sunlight here in the northern hemisphere. So they're getting a lot more sunlight here. On December 21st, the sun is directly over the Tropic of Capricorn. The shortest day of the year is in the northern hemisphere. And in fact, areas above 60 degrees latitude north get no sunlight whatsoever. And then in the southern hemisphere, South Pole, they get 24 hours of daylight here. So if you are at the equator, you get roughly 12 hours of darkness year round. If you are down towards the Tropic of Capricorn, you're going to be getting more. Antarctic Circle getting 24 hours of daylight. And if you are at the North Pole, no daylight whatsoever. Even though the first day of winter is on December the 21st, coldest time of the year, doesn't happen until January. Why is that? That's what we call seasonal heat lag. Seasonal heat lag is basically because the oceans take longer to absorb that reservoir of heat. And so there's normally like a three to four week lag. And so even though we get our lowest sun angle in December, the oceans are still pretty warm from the summertime. The oceans don't get to their coldest until late January, early February. That's typically when we have our coldest time of the year. That's also typically when we have the best chance of snow. The more you know. As we look at snowfall out there, additional flakes flying today at one to three inches here across northeast Ohio. So nothing really to write home about, but as we head out towards Pennsylvania, nine to 12, eight to 12 inches out there today. So you head off to areas in the pink and the purplish color. Uh, they're gonna get quite a bit of snowfall in the days to come. The clouds are gonna be quite stubborn. Here's three o'clock. You know, some of you guys, I, I'm thinking you might get a snowflake or two today. Three o'clock from Mansfield, Besires, Marion, Kenton, Bell Fountain, areas north of I-70 have the best chance of a quick snow squall. Notice that they really dissipate before they get south of I-70. You know what, though? It's going to make it feel more like December with a few flakes flying out there today. If you are one of those folks that might get a little seasonal depression, you're going to like this because it's going to warm up and the sunshine is 
back as we head into Friday. Look at this waking up on Friday morning. Bright blue sunshine. It's going to be a great day, especially if you have to travel on Friday. Early in the morning, though, there could be some slick spots, but definitely not complaining about the bright blue skies, which will be returning as we head into the day tomorrow. Maybe a few more clouds as we head into Friday night, but the clear skies will also allow things to get a lot colder at night. Now, as we look at the wind for today, above north, uh, above I-70, winds could be gusting 30, maybe even 35 miles per hour. They're not quite as bad down to the south. I mean, it's still blustery, don't get me wrong, but it's not quite as bad as what we're seeing up to the north. We could get a pocket of wind, maybe 40 miles per hour. And in fact, we've had reports of folks without power here, uh, even in Franklin County today, because you get the strong wind, maybe you have a dead tree, it blows over that dead tree, knocks down power line. Well, now you kind of got a domino effect that could knock out power for some of you. But nonetheless, the winds go away tonight. By 6 o'clock, the winds are looking a lot better. And with clear, with uh, clear skies and calm winds, maybe we don't have the low wind chill, but the actual air temperature gets pretty cold as we head into tonight. Now, as we head towards Friday, again, the winds don't really fluctuate a whole lot. Now, these overnight lows, we're watching them for you. Tonight, going into tomorrow morning, 18 degrees. But then look at this. If you're somebody that just downright does not like the cold, look no further than Sunday morning as nighttime lows will be climbing up to around 42. The weekend is here. Today is Friday Eve. Saturday, we're looking at temperatures in the mid 30s, upper 30s. If you're trying to weigh out which day do I hang up the Christmas lights outside, I would do it on Sunday because Sunday we're quite a bit warmer. There's a big difference between 38 and 48 degrees. Also on Sunday, it's going to be a little bit more sunny out there, so that should be pretty good to get out there and do any work in the backyard. Now, the average high for this time of the year is about 45 degrees. We climb above that going into Monday and Tuesday, and then we drop it back down as we head into Wednesday and Thursday of next week as we see another surge of cold air coming in from the north. But before that happens, we actually warm things up. I'm thinking Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, we're back to the upper 40s, lower 50s. The jet stream is way up here. So now we kind of tap into that nice conveyor belt of warm Gulf of Mexico moisture that's going to help uh, fuel that warm up here. I'm thinking mid 50s by about Monday. Now, as we look at the rainfall forecasts, not a whole lot going on for Friday and Saturday. So we head towards Sunday, 60% chance of rain. If you're trying to get outside, don't let that deter you because the devil's in the details. I'm thinking that's going to be a nighttime event, Sunday night late. And then on Monday, that's going to be a morning event here. We're looking at 100% chance of rain. That's going to be during the first half of the day. Take a look at this moisture, though, coming in from the south, 1130. Again, we're saying technically we get rain on Sunday. By this point, you're probably done with your traveling or whatever you have to do. So rain moves on in. Monday morning, we get socked with heavy rainfall. You know, looking at some of the latest data, I'm thinking could be looking at a half inch to maybe an inch when all is said and done. That moves on out of here. And then hello, drier conditions as we head towards next Tuesday night going into Wednesday as high pressure builds back into the region. As we head into the month of December, average rainfall is about three inches. Average high 46. We've been below that every single day for the start of this season. And then by New Year's Eve, the average high about 38 degrees. So we'll see exactly how Mother Nature kind of plays out right now as we lean towards the second half of December. Things are actually trending warmer. It's been so doggone cold the last couple of weeks, but we actually warmed things up quite a bit. And in fact, the Climate Prediction Center, pretty confident we're looking at above average temperatures near normal precipitation. So not super wet, not super snowy, not super dry, looking near normal. As we get a look here at today, temperature is climbing up to the middle end of the 20s. And as we get a look at that seven day forecast, again, 10 weather impact for the first half of today, warming up as we head towards Saturday and Sunday, Monday and Tuesday, tracking some showers. And then by Wednesday, the sunshine is back. Should be looking pretty nice. Gets a little bit cooler though, as we head towards the later half of next week. While we are dealing with the cold parts of Northeast Ohio, dealing with the snow. How much do you ask? Well, we've seen parts of Northeast Ohio get as many as 50 to 60 inches of snowfall. This was taken east of Cleveland across Northeast Ohio. And take a look at that. You know, this is one of those situations where you get hardly any snowfall. You just got to carve out a path because you don't have much other choice. You can see here 
Also, they've been dealing with the cold, but the snow kind of acts like an insulator, which can help kind of warm things up a little bit. We've got some more video across Northeast Ohio. Take a look at that, folks. Digging out vehicles here. Some cars getting stranded on I-70 as they've been dealing with those whiteout conditions. You can see this video showing the roads covered in snow, and they've been dealing with so much of it lately. More on the way as we head into today and tomorrow. Luckily, that belt of heavy snowfall is going to stay away from us. But if you have to travel up there because it's so cold, we're not expecting much of that snow to melt. And so road crews really battling that ice out there as rock salt only works down to a certain point. Well, that does it for here on 10 TV Plus. Tune in for 4, 5, and 6 o'clock this evening for Chief Meteorologist Jerry Martins.